Are you wanting to increase athlete effort levels in training? Why not add some competition with leaderboards? Stick around and I'll show you how in this week's Power BI for Sport tutorial. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe below and make sure you hit that notification bell icon so you are notified of future videos. Well, athlete leaderboards are a great way of adding competition to training, and these may have a positive effect on the athlete level effort levels of your athletes. Although I would say timing is important, and the leaderboard should be relevant to the outcome of your training session, so don't use them all the time. For example, using it after a recovery session is probably not the best idea. So first of all, to get started, all we need to do is have all our data loaded into Power BI. And this report here that I'm using is actually based on our previous session report here. So what we can do is we could pull through, for example, this session date here. And we're just going to load that up the top here. And we can sync that. What I'm going to do is just make sure that the background is off on this one, just for a little difference. Just like that. And then all we want to do is we want to create a clustered bar chart and we're going to create it horizontally on our axis rather than having a date we're going to have our athletes and then all we want to do is we just want to go in and grab our uh, total distance data for example and we'll add that as a value so first of all let's just make a few formatting changes so for example on the y-axis let's make these 12 and I've recently been using uh, the Sego UI bold uh, font family, and we're going to increase that there, make sure it's uh, dark as well. One of the cool things with Power BI, if you do run into this with longer athlete names, is change the maximum size on your y-axis. What it will do is it will move the size where your athlete names are here. So for example, when I went smaller, you can see some of them disappeared. If I create this a bit bigger, it'll expand it and allow a little bit more space there. So that's just a nice little trick for you while you're listening in. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just change our x-axis too to make sure that's also the same. And our font family, we can go to bold as well. And because we're using total distance, we want to see this as thousands. So there we go. So on this session, we can kind of see here where our athletes sit based on um, alphabetical order or the order that I've created in my athlete table. But what we want to see is we want to see this by uh, whoever got the highest or whoever ranked the highest in that session. All you need to do is very simple is sort by and total distance. For my data set, because I have ordered my athlete names and that is the main one on the axis, for the Y axis, it will default to that as your order type. So as you can see there, we've already ordered and it's gone descending uh, by total distance. So at the top you can see athlete four ran the furthest for total distance, whereas athlete three was at the bottom. But one of the cool things you might want to do is add a little bit of a color scheme here so you can get your gold, silver and bronze. And one way of doing that is to just rank your athlete outputs. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go uh, rank uh, TD and you're going to use rank X here and I'm going to show you just one little thing first so what we're going to do is we're going to put in our athlete table because that's what we're using and then our expression should be total distance and I actually have this as a measure here and then we're going to miss out the value and we're going to make sure that this here is we're going to go descending and then in case of ties, we're just going to go dense. So this will keep the values close together. So when we do this, let's add this here as a tooltip. And let's have a look. What happens? We've got ranked 1, ranked 1, ranked 1. That's not what we want. And because we've got our data laid out with our athlete names on the side here, it's going to filter all your data and you're not going to be able to see everyone and where that athlete fits. 
With one small change though, we can make uh, this rank work properly. And all we need to do is just add all in front of the athlete table. So now that we've done that, athlete four is one, athlete five is two, three, and so on. So now we have a rank for our athletes. What we can also do is now uh, conditionally format. So let's go and use the rank for our conditional format using a rule. And all I'm gonna do is search for rank. And the first one I'm just gonna go is, not is blank, is one. And I'm just gonna choose a color here that's close to gold, so there. And then is two, so make sure we click is. And we'll try and find something that's close to silver, so there. And then the last one is three. Oop, need to click is. And then we'll find something that's kind of like a bronze color. So let's just go with uh, this color here. And then the last thing, we want anything greater than or equal to four, but less than a thousand or whatever you want to put in there. And we'll just give that a third color or a fourth color, sorry. Click OK. And as you can see there, now we have our athletes ranked gold, silver and bronze. What we can also do is add some data labels here and let's make these white and I'm going to move the position to inside the base. And then what we can do is again create, uh, make our text size a bit bigger and then bold our values so now you can see them nice and clearly. But what if you also want to show players what that looks like in relation to a match load? And that's very easy. What you can do here is do the exact same thing, just copy and paste it over. But then now obviously just change our measure to go and show our value by our, our total distance for the game. But because we're now showing this here by athlete order again, we can switch this to either one of these. So if we went by game percentage, you'll see that now our athletes are not ordered the same. So what we could do is do it by rank here and then make sure that we have it as ascending. So now we can see all of these line up again exactly the same way. So in that scenario, what you could do is you can move, remove your Y axis and make this a bit smaller. You can also remove your title, which it didn't remove for both of these. But then one of the things you might want to do is actually show based on a game percentage who ranked higher. So what we can do is we can just take our rank from earlier, copy that and create a new measure. And let's call this percentage. And then we're just going to change this measure in the middle to game percentage here. We're going to want to keep our rank TD in the tooltip, otherwise we'll lose our order. But let's just rank our TD percentage here. So if we look at the bottom one, it's now the 4th, 8th, and 10th. So you can see it's a little bit different. So what we can do is now color off that instead, which will slightly change the where our athletes fall in terms of the coloring. But we can keep the order so that they're aligned. So as you can see there, now athlete 13 has actually got the highest in terms of a game percentage. Athlete three, even though they're at the bottom, they're actually working harder based on a game. So this would be one way of showing your athletes, yes, okay, maybe you've done a lot in terms of an absolute value, but when you relate that back to a game, you actually haven't done as much as what you thought. If we're making it as small as we have, Oh, let's just make it a bit bigger. All right, there we go. So if I was to add any more uh, values onto here, at the moment, as we said, this is just total distance. Um, and if you were wanting to have a full, well-rounded report here to show to your athletes every day, you may want to put total distance, uh, high-speed running, and one of the biggest ones for competition is max velocity. 
so those are the three I would say. Um, you can also use this kind of report for things other than your training load data, and that might be, for example, jump data, testing data, um, weekly Nord board scores or force outputs, anything like that. Uh, anything to create a little bit of competition to help drive uh, athlete buy-in or uh, athlete effort levels and to actually show them that they're improving on a week-to-week -week basis. So now if we were to change the date of our session here, all our data would change and we can see where our athletes uh, or our dynamic rankings are also adjusting as we go. And that's one of the cool things about this type of report. So there we have a really awesome start to a form of an athlete uh, or a session leaderboard. What we can do is we can format that any way we like. We can add a text box up the top and we can go and say here, uh, total distance as meters and percentage of game. Again, we can remove our background, change this to uh, Sego Bold, make this a bit bigger, let's say 16, center it. And there, if you were to just print that out, you would have an, a nice start to something you can hang up in the player's changing room or send to them via a email every day or on the days you select. If you found this video useful and you enjoyed it, please make sure you hit like and subscribe below. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time where we will continue to power performance through data. Thank you. Mm -hmm.